Good morning, everyone. The action continues here in the main interview room. Porter Moser, the head coach of the Loyola Chicago Ramblers, joins us for the next 20 minutes. We're going to add student athletes in about 10 minutes. Student athletes are at the breakout session right now, but they'll join us shortly. This news conference, we're back to the regular coverage parameters. No video recording of any kind, no flash photography, and you can't go live on social media. Coach, would you like to tell us how you're feeling today? And then we'll get to some questions. I feel great, but obviously Sister Jean's press conference is still going on. <laughs> That's the open seats. Um, no, I feel great. Um, you know, the San Antonio has been absolutely welcoming as, as always. And they just, it just, the weather's cooperating. It just couldn't be a better atmosphere and scene for this, for this Final Four. For the record, I think Sister would have stayed another hour, and her, her bodyguards got her out of there after 15 Good. minutes. Good. That, 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 that's what they need to do. We'll go to the front row first with uh, Adam, then we'll get to your question in the third row. Hey, Coach Adam Zagoria, how you doing? Good, Adam. Um, I covered Marcus Towns in high school a little bit. He played with Wade Baldwin and Carl Anthony Towns, obviously. Can you just talk a little bit about how you came to get him at Loyola, and what do you think this all means for him? You know, it's that... Um, you know, just doing due diligence, you know, there's those transfer lists that go out there and just kind of scouring. We didn't know Marcus, and then, you know, hey, we see Marcus Towns transferring, and all of a sudden, next you know, we're watching all the film, and then all, then you start digging, then you start calling people. And the more you dug on Marcus, the more people that know Marcus, he's a winner. He's tough. He's a winner. Look, he won three state championships. He goes to Fairleigh Dickinson. And it just kept on, the more we dug, the more we're like, this is what the kind of profile kid we're looking for. And then we started talking to him on the phone, building a relationship, uh, and it led to an official visit. And one of the coolest things that Marcus has said that I, that I love, that I didn't realize that came out through this, is he said about two weeks ago when someone asked him why he came to Loyola, it was on his official visit. He was in my basement. We, you know, we have the guys at my house, and um, he was hanging with the guys, and just I was just watching him interact with the guys, and I, I put my arm on his shoulder. I said, Marcus, it's like you're already on the team. And I just said that because I felt it. And I didn't, and fast forward two years, I never knew he felt like that. And he was like, that really, the family atmosphere that you have at Loyola, that was something that drew me to him. What he means to us, he is a warrior. He is a warrior. He makes winning plays. He makes toughness plays. He's uh, as high character as a guy as you can imagine. I mean, he's the kind of guy you want to, you know, sit next to at a pregame meal because you can sit there and talk about anything. You know, he's, he's just a, a great guy. And, um, but I, I love that he's in our bunker. I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Marcus will name drop. I mean, he'll, he'll name drop. He, he knows everybody in the country, according to him. Um, and, uh, but what a high school team, you know, Carl Anthony Towns and Wade Baldwin. What a team. For the benefit of our live broadcast, please follow up with the microphone. Thank you, Adam. Third row, please. Hey, Coach. Lou Friedman. Hey, Lou. How are you? The, uh, do you still have that picture on your desk from the students running out onto the streets from 63 that you said? It's that? not on my desk. It's in a, uh, it's in a um, bookshelf right to my left. Yes, I do. Are you it's... hoping to replace it this year with something Yes, fresh? absolutely I am. I've, I've, I've kept those pictures of the past to constantly remind me. Like, if you look a picture of my office, like, right up to the left, is a black and white photo of Jerry Harkness and the 63 team holding the trophy. And I let's been up since the beginning. And then to the farther left in the bookshelf is that it's an amazing picture of Sheridan Road with like a car and they, the car can't move. You know, it's in the, the guy, it's like a convertible. The guys are sitting in there and I'm just like, look at the excitement here in Chicago with Loyola Ramblers. And it's just been a, something that is, that I've wanted to look at every day to, to drive me. And it's, it's, it's a really cool photo still in my office. We're going to use the back left microphone for the next two. We have a question here and then right here. Uh, Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. Kind of a two-part question about um, the process the NCAA has currently for to select the NCAA tournament. And you know, teams like yours, had you lost your conference tournament, probably wouldn't be here. Um, what needs to change? Is, is, is your run through this tournament maybe a, 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 a reason that the NCAA needs to take a look at how they should do things differently and get more teams like yours in the tournament? And secondly, um, how many uh, power conference schools did you try to schedule in the last few years in the non-conference, and how many said no? All right, I'll, I'll first acknowledge that the NCAA Selection Committee has an amazingly hard job. 
because no matter what happens, it's going to be scrutinized. So I want to acknowledge that. But I also want to, want to say, to, to follow up to your question of, of yes, I hope, I hope our run sparks some conversation on trying to continue to find the best way. I don't think we're at that point yet. I don't think we're there yet. Um, and I think we need to continue to find the best way because it was, according to everybody, we weren't going to get in. I mean, you could get a tweaked ankle in practice to a star player for us and lost by one in the conference tournament and we weren't here. You could have a shot bounce in or bounce the other way and we're not in. After the body of work, we felt what was good. Um, this was an interesting stat. I thought, you know, I remember, I remember being a coach in and around the country and watching the VCU run and the George Mason run and how awesome I thought that was. I thought that, I mean, I was really, that wouldn't have happened. Those were at large bids. That, those that, that's, those storylines wouldn't have happened in today's day and age because they wouldn't have got in. I think that's an amazing thought, you know. So I, I, I acknowledge that there's, it's just a really tough process for them. But I, I hope this, we, we got to continue to find to tweak it. As far as the one thing that bothers me and it bothers a lot of other coaches um, and uh, in the country with that with the scheduling at our level is they they like blame us for our schedule like well he's scheduled really weak that is not the that is not the case I have a we have a list of like two I mean hundred calls you know home and home we'll start there no home and home we'll we'll do it. You know, and because we, we want a hard schedule. And that's what I think bothers us the most, where it's, it's like you're blamed for, for not having a tough schedule. It's like, that's not our, we're, we're trying. I had a Power Five school buy out of a game this year not to play, all right? Um, and I can tell you right now, the last three weeks, my, my schedule, my coach that's in charge of scheduling, it's even harder. We played a bye game at Florida this year and won, fortunately. It, um, and that's even making it harder for us to get bought. You know, to get bought is now tricky. So it, it is a web of scheduling that is very hard for us at our level to get a, a good. And the bottom line is it's very hard. We were very, very, very fortunate to win at Florida. It, the, the, the numbers show to win those road games are harder. That's why we're trying to get home and homes. Those are becoming so hard. The, um, the, the tournaments, the, the MTs, the, the exempt tournaments, you know, three years ago, I was trying to get into the big ones. And they're like, you know, you're Loyola Chicago. Hopefully now, because you get into these years in advance, I'm hoping now we can get into some of these, you know, to play that. It's like Northern Iowa. They've had, uh, Ben Jacobson's done an amazing job there. He's gotten into the big ones. I mean, he, they, they, they beat NC State. They beat, um, who's the other one? I know they took Villanova very close. Uh, and they had another great win in that tournament. And they were able to play some good teams in a neutral setting. And that's what you hope. But I, I want to continue to hopefully this sparks conversation because these are great stories. I mean, just to think the VCU and George Mason might not have happened with the at-large bids. And, um, um, but like I said, and I'll end it there, is the thing that bothers me the most is, is us getting blamed for not having a tough schedule when we're trying our tails off. Uh, let's take one on the left and the front, and then we'll bring the student athletes up. Porter, as you know, uh, Cameron Satterwhite tore, tore his ACL his senior year, didn't play his high school season. H how did a kid from Arizona get on your radar, and how did he, how has he kind of settled into his role since he's been here? <clears throat> well, one of my assistant coaches knew some people out there in uh, Arizona. One of my assistants who's not with me anymore, he um, he's uh, brought him to the table. And he said, you know, this kid was going to go to Colorado. I saw, I saw him before his injury. He's really long, athletic. Um, so we got to know Cam, and Cam's a great kid. And we kind of took a chance on him because he did, he did tear his ACL. And, uh, you know, it's tough when you, when you miss your whole senior year of high school um, with that. And then, then he came his freshman year. He actually got thrown into the fire a bunch his freshman year. Um, and then, you know, the strength of his leg, strength. And I thought he's made a big jump this year. I know he's, he's playing a good role for us, but it's not the minutes he probably wants, but, you know. But we're playing eight, nine guys. He's in that rotation. Um, we've we've ha put him the ball in his hand more. You know, he has some point guard ability, and he has some length, and he can pass. So he does a good job of, of coming in into that, doing that. But it's always tough when a kid misses his entire senior year of high school 
then having to play college. We have actually two players. Christian DeGrand from Illinois, same thing happened. You know, his, he tore his ACL and missed his senior year, and he's going through that right now as a freshman of that, just that strength factor bouncing back after a sit-out a year. Welcome to Student Athlete Show. Well, now welcome student athletes from Loyola, Chicago, Dante Ingram, Marcus Towns, Clayton Custer, Ben Richardson, and Andre Jackson. We'll join Coach Moser at this time. Let's take a question in the front on the right. Thank you. Hi, uh, Owen Fackler from China Television. Thank you. A question for Coach Moser, please. Very briefly, how much of a distraction for you and the team is the ongoing debate about pay, uh, scandals, and so on surrounding it? How much of a distraction is that for you and the team? And second question, where do you stand on the one and done rule? Thank you. The um um, the first question I understand is like the, the scandal of the thing, where we stand on it. Oh, it hasn't been a distraction at all for us, to be honest with you. We, we really haven't talked about it. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about what we have going on at Loyola and how we do things at Loyola. So it truly has not been a distraction. Um, if anything, we're proud of how we're doing things and, and who these guys are. So um, the one and done rule, you know, I always, I always look at that as, as like people say they're recruiting one and duns. I don't think coaches go into that. I think coaches go into it. They're trying to recruit the best players possible out there. And it just so happens to be the elite of the best players out there happen to be one and done. You know, I, don't, I don't think coaches go, I'm going to recruit a one and done. I, I just think they, they go, they're evaluating the top players in the country. It's like I, he's the, one of the top players in the country. I'm going to recruit him. But he's, he just happens to be a one and done. So um, that also isn't a – a distraction for us um, and um, <laughs> no offense guys <laughs> sorry I love you guys you guys are great but it hasn't been a distraction for us the one and done let's look for questions for the student athletes if there are any including one to maybe retort what coach just asserted <laughs> that was a joke <laughs> it's the front left microphone hello yeah that's on now I, this is for Ben. Lou Freeman from the, uh, from the Cody paper. I used to cover Loyola in Chicago, though, some years ago. Um, you know, you kind of smiled when the gentleman identified himself as being from China television. <laughs> I just wondered how much you guys, even it could be a couple of you, not just Ben, about how the attention that is, and how it's grown in the last few weeks, even on campus when you came back for you know, each round. We'll let Ben take that, and then if Andre has a response as well. Yeah, um, you know it's it's been cool. It's been it's been really big for uh, the university. Um, I know coaches talked a lot about how, how you know all this stuff. You know, it's been a part of the process, and and um, you know it's it's you, you can't really plan or uh, control a lot of the stuff going on, um, the media, the attention from the outside, and expectations. Um, we we've just been focused on you know what we can control in the locker room and and how we do our prep and, and do everything as, you know, as normal as possible. But um, it's been, it's been really cool. And, and I know, you know, the Loyola community is, has given me so much and, and the university. And so I'm just happy that, that, you know, we can get, get some attention and, and get some publicity for, for such an amazing place. And, and, um, you know, let, let people know and, and kind of represent um, our community and our university. Um, because it's it's given us so much, and we're proud to represent it. Andre, Texas Zone. <laughs> uh, I'll say we we worked hard for this. Uh, we put in a lot of work, so just getting all the attention, getting the recognition has been great for us. But uh, we know how to block it out and focus on basketball. Questions for the student athletes or Coach Moser? Let's go to the front right, Shannon. Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Um, for Ben and Marcus, uh, I remember you guys talking about Clayton when he came back from injury and just saying how just things click or things just start working at a different level. Can you describe how he does that or what he does that makes the offense click? Ben first, please, then Marcus. Yeah, I mean, Clay is, is a, a well-rounded, um, unselfish player that, um, that, you know, he can run our offense and, and get things going, you know, like like nobody else. You know, he he's unique in the way that he – 
knows how to make plays for others, and he also can, you know, go get a shot for himself, and, and he's very good at that as well. And, and I think just having him back, he, he has so much confidence, and, and, you know, he really, you know, infuses the rest of us with a ton of confidence. And, and I think just having him on the court um, and, and, and being able to, you know, do everything that we've been doing, you know, kind of, because that's kind of how, how we were, you know, it, with Clay as the starting point guard when he, when he was out, it kind of made it difficult for us, but it also gave a lot of other guys, you know, opportunity to, to get some experience and, and have us grow our depth a little bit. But, you know, when he came back, it really brought that, that confidence back and, and that, you know, offensive ability that, you know, we've had and, and our ability to, you know, be unselfish. And, and, you know, he really starts all that stuff. You know, he, he, he makes so many things happen with, with his ability to, you know, get downhill, get the domino started and, and be an unselfish player and, and put pressure on the defense. Um, it's, it's been, you know, since he came back, it's, it's shown, you know, with all the success that we've had. Marcus. Well, uh, uh, no, no, Clay, <laughs> you know, Clay, he makes uh, everything on us a lot easier. Just the way, you know, he handles the point guard position, you know, uh, for any player that plays a point guard is to make his job a lot easier for the rest of the team. You know, uh, he does a really good job of that. You know, he, he's an unselfish player, but he knows uh, the opportune times to score the ball and uh, uh, the way he distributes the ball to, to the whole team. And uh, he, he's a leader on his team. And uh, uh, I mean, he's a player of the year for a reason. And, uh, but uh, he, he's, he's a humble person, so he'll probably say that uh, if it wasn't for us, he wouldn't be in that position. So. Uh, but <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, he had, like I said, he just like Ben said, uh, everything that he said and uh, he just makes uh, stuff a lot easier for us. And uh, we're just so happy to have him on his team. We have time for another question or two. Let's go to Mark on the right side. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Dante, uh, Sister Jean had her own news conference before. It was jam packed. What do you, as players, make for the uh, the fact that she's become a, such a sensation, and what does she do for this team? Oh, well, I was looking in the media room walking by, and you, you would have thought she was one of us, one of the players, the way she was getting interviewed. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> she uh, she's meant a lot, you know, to this program, to the city of Chicago. Uh, obviously, you know, with the prayers that everybody sees that she's been doing for us, uh, you know, she she's around, and her aura is just so bright. Uh, she, she sends emails after the game, you know, generalized and individualized, you know, letting you know what we did well and, you know, just to keep it going and instilling that confidence in us. So, I mean, obviously to have her support, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And, you know, she's like no other. And we're happy to have her on our side. We have another question on the right side, and this will be the last question. We're out of time. Two quick questions. First off, um, you talk about strength of schedule. You have DePaul down the road. Why don't you guys play each other? Have you guys reached out to them or how has that gone? Absolutely, we've t we've talked many times. We'd we'd love to. I mean, I know, um, no, there's there's so many schools that are included that we've tried to reach out to, and um, it's it's tough. It's just like I said earlier. The, the thing that bothers me is is when you get blamed for not having a strength of schedule when we're trying so hard. I mean, our phone call. We, we, you look at our list of calls that we've made and and not get any response. So it's tough. It's tough. Let's get the microphone over to the right side, please. Oh, okay. Can we turn, let's turn that on. There's a follow-up question. Yeah. Wagner's probably going to be your guys' biggest uh, opponent that you're going to have to go against, against Michigan. What's your guys' defensive strategy, and what is the plan to, uh, to go against him? That's for Coach. Well, no, he's, he is a matchup. Uh, he's a matchup uh, dilemma, being that, that big, and that can stretch you. In the Valley, we haven't seen 6'11 stretch players like him. And uh, so for sure, we've been talking about it, um, not talking about it, we've been game planning with it because he's a terrific player. I mean, he's really, really good. Um, he's tough, he competes, he can, he can put on the deck as well. So uh, th there's, a, there's, there's definitely um, uh, a lot of respect there from our part in terms of what we're going to have to defend. We'd I like, will want to follow up on what Dante said about the Sister Jean thing, about uh, you thought it looked like us. I walked by, I thought it looked like Tom Brady at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I have an original bobblehead, and depending how all this stuff, from the very beginning when I got here, she had a bobblehead, and I got one of the originals, so 
I might be a pseudo name on eBay putting it out there. <laughs> I have it, and it's, I think she autographed it too. It's hard to keep up with all the different versions. Yeah. There's been several editions. <laughs> We'd like to thank Dante, Marcus, Clayton, Ben, Andre, and Coach Moser. We want to wish you guys good luck. Thank you guys. Tomorrow night. Thank you. See you back here tomorrow. Mr. Dean, too. No, I thought it was a good one, so I'm glad. Glad to drop the assist for you, Coach.